without any altar of God, I know that somebody is about to be revived. Am I talking to somebody? Hallelujah. I know that you will be revived. I know that everything around you will be revived. In the matchless name of Jesus. Father Lord, I thank you for the revival. Thank you, O oh Lord, for the revolution of change in the mindsets of your people. I thank you, O oh Lord, for the new revelations. Thank you for the present revelations, O oh Lord. I give you all praise. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for that that you have done. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. You may be seated wherever you are in your bedroom, in your sitting room. I want to welcome you to today being a great, wonderful day in the presence of God. Hallelujah. Today is the last Sunday and the last day in the month of February. But it's not your last day on earth. Am I communicating with somebody? God has proposed today to usher you in from tomorrow to the month of March. And the month of March is a great month. For the month of March has been declared as my month of multiplication. Hallelujah. Say that to yourself. Say the month of March has been declared as my month of multiplication say that one more time the month of march is my month and it has been declared as the month of multiplication hallelujah you will multiply in the name of jesus that amen is not coming like you believe it i prophesy to you right now watching online and you that is seated here today that you will multiply in the name of jesus everything about you must multiply in the name of jesus nothing will stop you from multiplying in this season in this season that the lord has made for you everything that concerns you will be double double somebody said double double hallelujah Even as we pray and we believe God for multiplication, there are things and steps and discipline that we must come to and understand and flow in. Multiplication doesn't just take place. Before you go into experiencing multiplication, there must be some steps. Can I hear you say some steps? Sometime last week, Sunday, we talked about being a champion in this life how you you turn into being a champion how you could be a champion what are the meaning of you being a champion is it necessary for you to be a champion and it was established last week Sunday that yes it is very very important and very necessary for you to be a champion because everybody has aspires to be at the top am I communicating with somebody the Bible said, I wish above all things that you prosper and be in good health, even as your soul prosper it. So prosperity is a necessity. Am I communicating? Prosperity is compulsory in the kingdom. Amen. Stagnation is not something that you should look at or, or accept in any form or shape. Everything that the Lord wants for you is a change, something new, something great and something better. And I know that something new and something great and something better is coming your way this season in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Today I'm going to be talking as in connection to that topic also. So today we're going to be looking at how to be a champion as a believer. Praise God. We've established last week Sunday that it is necessary. So now we want to know what are those things, what are those steps that you can take that can make you to be a champion. I believe that you have your, your, your writing materials. You have things to take notes with. And I've told you, I say, when you take note, you will be noted. Praise God. So, 
let's see something in the book of proverbs proverbs chapter 1 verse number 8 to 9 Thank you, Holy Spirit. Proverbs 8, Proverbs, Proverbs chapter 1, verse 8 to 9. I'm going to be reading from the Amplified. It says, My son, hear the instruction of your father. My son, hear the destruction of your father. Am I correct? No. It says, hear the instruction of your father. And do not reject the teaching of your mother. For you to be a champion in your field, you must be a person that receives instruction. People that feel or or have the mentality of arrival that you know I don't need any instruction definitely ends up in destruction because instruction is what keeps you instruction your another word you can get from it is destruction so instruction when you keep the instruction things will be destroyed around you And verse 9 says, For they are garland of grace on your head. When you, when, you, when you listen and accept instructions, you become so graceful with the grace of God. And it says, And there are chains and ornaments of gold around your neck. When you see a man that operates within the graceful nature of instruction, you discover that everything around him will be successful and progressional. Why? Because he operates with instruction. So one of the things that you must do and know and operate in consistency is to love instruction number one love instruction how to be a champion as a believer number one love instruction a lover of instruction will never meet destruction number two this would sound very very you know funny but the fact still remains that when you honor your biological and spiritual parents when you honor every man in the bible that live an honorable life that honor their parents that honor those that god has put over them this may sound so simple to you, but you will be so surprised that because many has failed to honor their parents, that's why they live in lack and destruction. So, number two, honor your biological and spiritual parents. Exodus, in Exodus 20, verse 12. Exodus chapter 20, verse 12. Exodus 20 verse 12. It says, honor in bracket, respect, care for your father and your mother. So that your days may be prolonged in the land the Lord your God gives you. Disregard and dishonor for parental coverage causes untimely death. The Bible says, he that curseth his father or his mother, he says, his lamp shall be put off. Some are suffering today not because they are not gifted. Some are suffering today not because they are not talented. Some are suffering today not because they don't have what should make them prosperous. But because they failed in this area. 
and you find out that everything around them keeps falling and going down. There is one thing I am glad about. The Bible did not say, honor your good father and good mother. The Bible did not say, honor your perfect father and your perfect mother. Why would God say that? Why would God just go straight and say, honor them? Humanly speaking, there are some parents that are not worthy of being honored. But it's not based on their characteristics and their attitudes. Or their lifestyle that you must honor them. That's the mistake people do. There are two persons in life that have the audacity to bless you and lift a curse off from your life. Number one, your biological parents. Number two, are your spiritual parents. When Reuben's father placed a curse on him, it got to a time after many years that, you know, you know, you know, Moses was blessing because he was ready to go. So he was blessing the 12th tribe. When he got to Reuben, he looked at Reuben because the curse the father placed on Reuben was that Reuben and his generation will be unstable. The father looked at him. Say, Reuben, thou will be unstable in all your ways. Unstable as water, you will never excel. What a curse. You got to understand that what your parents say over you stands. Parents are physical deity that God has placed over you. Nobody has the choice, the ability to make the choice of the kind of parents they would love. Praise God. I believe if God had given you the opportunity or some of us to say, oh, would you want to come from so and so person? Some of us will say no. Like before God is completing the statement, you say no. But I thank God for God. That he's not sending you to a place because of today. God didn't send you to that family because of today. He sent you to that family because of the problem you have encountered today in that family. The reason why you are having that, 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 that pushback on you is because you have what it takes to turn that family around. Nobody curses their problem. Everybody speaks positive about their problem so there is no father or mother that is perfect just as it is there is no body that is perfect there are defects in our lives so the earlier you start accepting the fact that things are not the way you should have want them to be and start speaking positively about them the better so if you must be a champion you must learn to confront things that stands out to you in the sense that you must live a life of honoring your parents honor them take care of your parents you want to be blessed oh make sure you check up on your parents And I want to tell you this, child of God. If you want to be a champion, you have to understand that you cannot have two fathers and you can't have two mothers. Even though somebody tells you and say, I want to be a father to you. It is a wish and a desire. But the reality, it can happen like when a biological father takes care of you. When reality set out, 
many of them will always call you by your father's name not by the name they have been calling you all this while so don't be afraid to face realities in your life be thankful for the parents you have they may not have had so much to send you to the best of schools but at least they did you a favor they didn't have bought you when you were in in the womb your mission was not aborted at least you should give thanks to god am i communicating so exodus chapter 20 verse 12 god was speaking he said honor respect obey careful your father and your mother so that your days may be prolonged in the land the Lord your God gives to you. Praise God. Another translation puts it this way. It says regard, treat, honor, due obedience and courtesy your father and mother that your days may be long in the land the lord your god gives to you in everything you do there are two persons you need to speak over your life for you to be prosperous and successful and be a champion number one your parents number two your pastor your spiritual authority if these two forces are behind you nothing will pull you down if your parents are praying for you, one of the greatest gifts you would ever pray for is to have a praying mother. A mother that prays. The other day, Elisha encountered a woman and the woman took care of Elisha and Elisha asked his armor bearer Gehazi, and say, what shall we do for this woman? For she has been nice to us. And his armor bearer Gehazi said to him, say, I have seen that she had no child. She had need for a son. And the Bible said, the man of God prayed for this woman. And the woman conceived and gave birth to a son. But the Bible said, according to the time of life, something happened to that little boy. One day, the boy woke up with so much pains in his head. And he was crying. And the father said to the servant, said, take the boy home to the mother. When they took the boy home, the little lad passed on. He died. When the news got to the woman, the woman never cried. She knew the source from where the child came from. She never ran to any other person other than back to the prophet whom the Lord spoke to concerning the child. When you have a prayer mother, a mother that prays indeed and not a mother that nags indeed. When you have a woman that spends her knees on the altar of God for you. Even when Satan has proposed to destroy your life. You would always escape. And because of the because of the persuasiveness of that woman, that boy came back to life. That is the importance of parents in your life. They may not be as educated as you. Hello? They may not have the degrees that you have. But you see that authority God has given to them. Don't joke with it. Because the authority they have can destroy your degree. Can reduce you to nothing. No matter how bad they look like or they seem to be. You, the area of honoring, you must honor them. You could see in bracket, it says respect, number one, two, obey, according to the will of God. Three, is care for them. Some of us don't even care for our parents. And we say we want to be champion. <laughs> 
impossible. The other day, when Saul had received the mandate to be a king from prophet Samuel, the Bible said that after he had received the anointing, and he was on his way back to his father and he met some bands of prophets the bible said the glory of god came upon him and he started prophesying the next thing they asked him and say who is your father who is your father don't be a spiritual bastard. Nobody grows by their own accord. Who is your father? Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians 6 verse 1. Ephesians 6 verse 1 says children obey your parents in the what? the Lord that is acceptable God does not reject it he accepts it the Bible says it is acceptable unto the Lord obey your parents in the Lord Exodus puts it this way, say, obey your father and mother. But when it comes to this particular height of Ephesians chapter 6 verse 1, to obey your parents in the Lord. You know, Adam and Eve, they lived a life of disobedience to God. And when God told them and said, listen, if you eat of that fruit, you will surely die. It was based on the spiritual level, not a physical death. Listen. If you operate in some certain way with your biological parents, there is bound to be physical untimely death. But when you operate in some way with your spiritual parents, there is bound to be spiritual death. So Ephesians chapter 6 verse 1 says, Children, obey your parents in the law. That is what acceptable before the law. Say, accept their guidance and discipline as his representative. For this is right. For obey Obedience teaches wisdom. Are you seeing that? Obedience teaches wisdom and self-discipline. I pray for you today that you will live in wisdom. I say you will live in the wisdom of God. They accept their guidance. Don't just do things because you believe you know. We all understand that the spiritual atmosphere supersedes the physical atmosphere. We believe and we know and we understand that whatsoever that happens physically has first of all take its root down in the realm of the spirit so nothing just happened for nothing so if we have this understanding and we know we will come to the acceptance and believe that we must deal with our spiritual life to come in connection with the word of God and when we are able to come to that height of where we are sound spiritually whatever we say in the open God and heaven 
honors it. Am I talking to somebody? In the place of parental coverage, there are certain things that are inevitable. In, this, in the place of parental coverage and parental guidance, there are certain things that must you must encounter. If you don't see these things in the life of anybody that is a spiritual parent over you, a pastor, a prophet, or a bishop, or a teacher, whoever, if you don't see these things, then you know that they are not doing what they are supposed to do. And very soon, if you continue that way, you're heading to a place of crash. One of the things you will experience according to Ephesians chapter 6, verse 1, amplified, is that you must experience guidance. You must experience guidance from your spiritual authorities. They will be able to guide you. Guidance doesn't mean that you don't know how to take decisions yourself. Guidance simply means that when you are about to embark on a thing, you come to them and disagree with you. Not disagree with you. They agree with you. Paul said, I will show you the more excellent way. It's not like the way you are doing it. It's excellent. But I will show you the more. There is a more in every excellent. There is a more in everything. In the realm of the spirit, there is no limitation. As far as you can see, God can give to you. Number two thing you're going to experience when you have spiritual coverage over you and to make you and give you the grace to be a champion is that you will experience discipline. Discipline is one thing that today's believers don't like. What is discipline? Discipline is the ability to deny yourself of certain comforts. And personal aggrandizements. In this dispensation, if you must be a champion, you must be disciplined. The reason why many are failing today is because they are not disciplined. You're asking God to give you money to start some business. And God has given you the money. And you know that business for you to be successful, you have to be out of the house every 4 a.m. So that before it is 6 o'clock in the morning, when customers need to come in for breakfast, you need to have something on ground. And here you are, a businessman and a businesswoman. You wake up. The, as of the time when customers are supposed to be coming for breakfast, that's when you're getting up from bed. Discipline. Deny yourself of the present comfort today. Discipline yourself. Discipline your, 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 your desires. Discipline things that you know that they are not able to take you to the place that you would want to be in the nearest future. Discipline. Some of us are not disciplined with timing. Every interview they call you for, they tell you to come by 10 o'clock. By 10 o'clock is when you are taking your bath from the house. Like literally. Hey! Are you serious? o'clock in the morning that's i mean interviewers are waiting for you by 10 in the morning is when you are getting up hey i'm supposed to have interview today oh i'm supposed to have interview today. and you want the traffic to clear for you because you are who
you got to be disciplined. You want to be cha a champion, you got to be disciplined. There are certain things I'm doing now. There are certain things I'm denying myself of now. Certain comforts. I can't just have it now. Even though I can have it, but I don't want it now. Because I know I can't be enjoying such kind of comfort and achieve what I want to achieve in the next five years. I can't. I mean, you can't eat your cake and have it. So what spiritual parents do, they look at you and assess you. And they are able to tell you, they are able to guide you. And they are able to instill discipline in you. One of the things you, you know about me when you come close is that when you come close to me, I instill discipline, not hatred. But when you have people that are indisciplined, when you want to infuse inside of them, the word discipline is not, it, it's not a bad word. It takes a person that is very principled to instill discipline. And it takes a principled person to accept discipline too. But when you, you want to instill discipline and the arrogance inside of man will speak. And when you tell them, okay, go. You look them from behind. You see that they are making catastrophic error. I pray that God helps us. Am I communicating? I pray that God helps us. One of the things that will make you be a champion wherever you go is if you are disciplined. The athletes, the reason why they call them professional athletes and people pay a huge amount of money to go and watch them is because they are disciplined. Who's in both today, everybody, I mean, when who's in both started, Everybody wants their children to start running. Hey, just keep running. Come out, come out of the house and run. Just run. Run from there. Just be running, son. Just be running. Hey. We say both today is about the fastest man on planet Earth. Am I communicating? At the point they were trying to rate his speed as fast as the speed of a cheetah. A human being. You think you said both just got up in the morning and did like this. And raised his two hands up and told the world, I said, world, I'm not the best runner. Believe it or you leave it. No. When some of us are busy snoring our way, we said both is busy at midnight. Doing some exercise. You want to be a financial giant. How many, how many books in a year as regarding finances do you read? Hello? Every reader is a higher goal achiever. Because when you read, discipline yourself to read, you instill inside of you great information anybody that don't have any information the person becomes deformed lack of information guarantees deformity a person can be complete and walking along the road but they are mentally deformed that's why when you carry one million dollars and give to a black man the first thing he thinks about is to go and buy a big bulldog chain and put on. I mean, he's ready to spend 350,000 US dollars to buy just one chain. And who is he buying the chain from? My guess is as good as yours. And give him the next one day, not two days, one day, one million dollars is done. So before you ask God to make you a champion, the greatest question you got to ask yourself is that, am I disciplined enough to go through the process 
to be a champion. I want you to understand also that there are different kinds of champions. There are local champion, household champion, international champion, global men, global champions. People that are making impact globally. What is your mark for success? At what age are you hitting and telling yourself that before I get to this age, this is what I want to achieve. This is what I want to achieve. This is what I want to do. I'm charging you today to put yourself under subjection and discipline yourself. Going to school takes discipline to go in and finish. It is not he that starts a thing that is successful. It is the person that starts and finishes well that becomes successful. Hello. The Bible said the end of the matter is better and sweeter than the beginning thereof. I want to let you know also that you cannot live a life of indiscipline and speak in tongues and expect to be prosperous. It doesn't work that way. Hello? When God created everything, dressed the garden and have everything handed over to Adam. God told Adam, he said, dress it. What do you understand by dressing? Take care of the garden. Keep it. You are praying to have kids, but the one man you have as husband, you've not been able to take care of him yet. You've not been able to handle one wife and you are asking for children. Discipline. You got to understand that being a champion is a daily activity. Not one in a lifestyle. Am I communicating with somebody? Are you there? Number three. Put yourself under subjection. What did I say? Under what? Under what? Under what? Very important. If you must be a champion, subject yourself. <laughs> if you must be a champion, make sure you subject yourself. In 1 Peter chapter 5, verse number 5. Likewise, you younger men of lesser rank and experience. Are you seeing that? You seeing that word? Experience. I'm reading from the Amplified. Likewise, you who are younger, younger men of lesser rank and experience. So there are people that don't have experience in a thing. If you don't have experience in a particular mode of business, what do you do? You subject yourself under somebody that have bigger experience and more experience than you. You can have the desire to be a champion but have a wrong attitude towards being a champion. You will never be a champion then. One thing is to have the desire. Everybody wants to be a champion but not everybody have the right attitude to be a champion. Am I communicating with somebody? He said be subject to your elders. The elders there is just men that are ahead of you. My communicating, he says, seek their counsel. It takes subjection to go to a man that you feel like you are bigger than to ask him, please teach me what you know. And it takes some level of humility to do that. Coca Cola today is a brand that the way they mix their, 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 their mixture and get their flavor till this day. Nobody knows about it. 
and the Coca-Cola family there is a secret in the Coca-Cola family Coca-Cola today is a product that there is no corner of this earth that you will never find the product called Coca-Cola and because it is a business that have spanned for many years they know that that's their source so they kept it secret and in that family it is only two persons that are shown the secret of the mixture in the larger family of coca-cola to learn the reason why many don't succeed is because pride has eaten their medulla blancata the medulla has gone the other side of the brain is already is already vanished because pride has filled it up like two more take a man that has a humble spirit he learns fast and you will be always open to tell him secrets why his heart is humbled any athlete that you see that argues with his coach check that athlete he may come to the limelight but he won't stay there for long he will fall there are some boxers that will never go in the ring to fight if their coach is not by the corner i mean you ask yourself seriously and you know before i was thinking that their coach would be a very good boxer like very strong man a coach has to be stronger than the actual boxer in the ring but sometimes when this coach comes around it's an old man that is you know bending this way and moving yet he's able to bring out a champion from a man One of the greatest boxers of all time, Mike Tyson. This man was picked up on the street by a boxer. I mean, the man saw Mike Tyson fighting on the street as a street fighter. And told him, I said, come, I see a champion in you. Mike Tyson had to humble himself to listen to instruction. But why did Mike Tyson say, hey, old man, I can knock you out now with just one punch. Of course, Mike can do that. But you know there is something about the coach that mike saw and he said no i have to humble myself for this man to make me who i want to be and when mike lost that man that was how Mike's career started shaking when the man passed on who is your coach who do you listen to who are you subjected to there are people today that goes about and wish to be an island. Nobody talks to me. I'm a master of myself. You can't be a master of yourself. Anybody you see that says they are master of themselves, avoid that person. They are, they, they are contagious, very destructive. Because when they will do something wrong, they are not accountable to anybody. Any man, use anybody that is not accountable to anybody, no superior it's a dangerous person because they can do and undo hallelujah so I go on, I go on with the reading 1 Peter chapter 5, 5 to 6 it says seek their counsel and all of you clothe yourselves with what humility towards one another tie on the seventh apron for God opposed the proud disdainful the presumptuous and he defeats them God even fights against those that are prideful if God is fighting against you who will be for you then so put yourself under subjection praise God any man that puts himself under subjection the last part of that scripture says but he gives grace to the humble the humble man is a man that puts himself under what? Subjection. Number four, am I right? 
Number four, never forget who you are following. Number four, never forget who you are following. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse number one. Never forget, never forget. No matter how successful you come to be tomorrow, do not forget who you are following. Who you are following. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse one says, thoughtfully, also remember thoughtfully also your creator in the days of your youth for you are not your own but his before the evil days come or the years drawn near when you will say of physical pleasure i have no enjoyment and delight in them remember god in all you do remember god remember you want to be a champion, put God first. In all you do, everything, do not forget the Lord your God. The Bible says, for it is him that giveth you the power to make wealth. Some of us, by the time we just make little money, just the aroma of the money alone blows your head. Suddenly your pastor becomes too small to talk to you. Or you forget the days when you are rolling on the floor asking God, Jesus, help me. Humble yourself. Don't forget God. Suddenly what God says to you now doesn't matter. Why? Because you feel like you've arrived. Listen, nobody arrives until we all arrive. He didn't get that one. Nobody arrives until we all arrive. And where we arrive is in heaven. If you think the mentality of arrival is because you have money, that is not arrival. Because money could fly out of your hand and everything could be blown away within a second. The only time we have actual arrival is when we unite with the Lord Jesus Christ. So you are still on a journey, girl. You are still on a journey, young man. You are still on a journey. There is no difference between you and the person you think you are bigger than, you are better than. You know why? Because when you die, it's still the same six foot, same measurement. When the person dies also, it's still the same six foot. I tell you, I say, no matter how you, you are so rich and you have a whole lot of houses or your house is so big, you will still sleep on one bed. No matter how many cars you think you have, you will still drive one at a time. So be humble. You've not arrived yet. Don't allow the sense of arrival to deny you of the wisdom of knowing that God rules in the affairs of man. And he giveth it to whosoever. Never forget who you are following. How to be a champion as a believer? Never forget who you are following. Number five. Number five. You catching something? Imitate good leaders through mentors. Hebrews 13 verse 7. New Living Translation. Imitate good leaders. book of Hebrews 13 verse number 7 I'm going to be looking at this from the New Living Translation if you're there say amen he said remember your leaders if you, must, you have to be a champion remember there is somebody God has put over you remember your leaders who taught you the word of God who taught you the word of God think of all the good that has come from their lives and follow the example of their faith don't be about the weaknesses of your leaders be about their strength 
Because what you run after, you become. Hello? When you see a man, the first thing you are looking at from that man is his weakness. You are not giving attention to his strength. Give yourself a little time, you start doing the same thing. Did you get that? Hebrews 13 verse 7. Knowing that that leader is a human and has some demerits. What he says here, he said, go after the good side of them. Learn from them. Imitate their faith. Think of all the good works that has come from their lives. Follow after good things. Don't be about copying the bad things. When you see people fighting a pastor, don't join to fight them. That is wrong. Don't join to fight that pastor. When you see people doing wrong, don't join them to fight. Because people that fight their leaders are losers. They're losers. You know why? God will always defend his servants. The only time you see things happen in a way it happened. Look at the life of David. When this man will go in the secret and make peace with God, you, will, you may not know. And God is, is not bound to come and tell you and say, do you know that... Uh, that man has come to me and apologized to me. So don't worry, don't fight him again. Listen, God did not appoint you as his hitman. So stop behaving like God's hitman. Hello? Jesus the other day said that who are you to judge another man's servant? So imitate good works and imitate good leaders and good mentors. Number six. Number six. Diligent in what you do. Be diligent in what you you do. We're going to be looking at um, Proverbs twenty-two. Proverbs twenty-two. Proverbs chapter twenty-two, verse number twenty-nine. We're going to be seeing this from the King James version. Hallelujah. Be diligent. He said, Seest thou a man diligent in his business? You want to be a champion? Be a diligent person. Seest thou a man diligent in his business? And the result of that diligence is that he shall stand before kings he shall not stand before being men ordinary men will stand before ordinary things but extraordinary men will definitely have extraordinary results have the mentality that you have to challenge yourself more to achieve greater heights how do you set a goal for yourself? Tell yourself that every year you must achieve something new. You will find out that you are progressional, not retrogressional. And neither are you stagnant. But you are progressional. You are moving. We are in 2021 now. Right? You must ask yourself in 2020, what was my achievement? One of the things I've told God and I've, I pray so much and even as I pray, I keep walking towards it, is that Father, every year in the Dunamis Palace, there must be something new. There must be something new. You, you, you just have to take us to another height. So it is also in your personal life you have to determine in your heart 
you have to tell yourself the truth when you are not doing well the greatest thing that will happen to a man is when a man lies to himself you know you're not doing well yet you're lying to yourself and using the scriptures to cover your weaknesses and say oh i'm fine i'm doing well accept the fact that something is lacking then you can be able to have the sight to see how to correct those things and go forward am i communicating don't politic with your destiny god did not call you as a politician you know stop politicking with your destiny so be diligent in anything god puts in your hand the bible the other day said for the lord shall prosper the works of your hands you want you want to be prosperous you want to be a champion what do you do what can you do when you walk into a company and you say you're looking for a job the first thing they ask you is what what can you do somebody say i hear you sir I hear you. number seven how to be a champion as a believer number seven you there do not observe the weather weather like believers <laughs> praise god do not observe the weather don't think of the weather canada weather is one example when you follow canada weather you will never go to work and after one or two months you'll be thrown out of the house your credit will go bad. <laughs> Time is money. The weather can stop you when you become somebody that employs his or herself to become a neurologist that look at the weather every time. Are you there in Ecclesiastes? Ecclesiastes 11 verse 4. Ecclesiastes 11 verse 4. Let's take from verse 3. I'll show you something there. Verse 3 says, If the clouds be full of rain, they empty themselves upon the earth. And if the tree fall towards the south or towards the north, in the place where the tree falleth, there it shall be. You can't cheat nature. Verse 4. He that observeth the weather and the wind shall not sow. And he that regarded the cloud shall not reap. Stop observing if things are working. Hello? Don't, don't observe the economy of the nation. God didn't create you as an economist. When you have to sow your seed, go out and sow your seed. Go out and walk. Your time you are giving is a seed you are sowing. Be innovative with things. If, if the system is changing, move and change also. God has given you wisdom. The brains you have in your head is not there for decoration. It's there for you to think. I was so, I was so, I was so glad and happy, you know, you know, for um, a member of this commission. You know, she walks in the food industry. Now the food industry is one of the places that is so hit by COVID. And the other day, I was so happy when I found out that she has created a job for herself. Why people are busy putting their hand on their head, waiting for the government? She just created something for herself. Instead 
of her waiting for her boss to tell her, okay, it's time for you to come and walk. Now she created herself as a mobile chef that goes from place to place to prepare dinner, breakfast, lunch for people and make her money, cash, put in her pocket. Some are still waiting for, I don't know, there is no job in Canada. Who will employ me? I've been looking for a job. Be innovative. The, see, let me tell you, this life is not fair. It will not give you what we want, what you want. It will give you what we, you demand of it. Don't observe the weather. Observers of weather are those that join others to say, oh, there is no job in Canada. In fact, in Canada, nobody, nobody can succeed. Observers of weather are those that say that in Canada, ministry can't work in Canada. But yet, there are churches that are going on multi-million dollar projects. Don't join them to say what they say. What they say should not bother you one second because your God is bigger than what they say. Believe in God. Believe in yourself. Believe in the grace of God upon your life. And nothing will be impossible for you to achieve. In the midst of impossibilities, people are making it. Even in the midst of this COVID, do you know how much some persons are making some people are making even more money now in the time of COVID than when COVID was not there. A lady that runs a restaurant, she was telling me, Pastor, I made more money. She, she's running a restaurant. I made more money. More. Now that lockdown is everywhere than when there was no lockdown. I mean, are you serious? The Bible said a little sleep, a little fold of the arms, there comes poverty. Poverty is a, see, if poverty, poverty is like a woman. When they come, they wrap their hands around you from the back and it's become very warm and the next thing you start sleeping in the arms of poverty. Oh, 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 oh. May you not be poor in the name of Jesus. May you not be poor. Poverty can be very comfortable if you are not careful. A little sleep. Can I just, the weather looks very funny today. It seems like it's going to snow. Hmm. Let me just have some little sleep. Just one little more little sleep. Before you know it, you're listening to CP24, 6 p.m. news. You started sleeping from 11 o'clock in the morning. You are now arriving back, like evening flight, 6 p.m. More, more grace to your elbows. And when you come to church, you want to blame the pastor. Pastor, it seems like people are not prospering in this place. When you are seeing people prospering, God did not tell you that he will bless the empty hands you come with. No. He said he will bless the works of your hand. Have something can't tell God, fill my cup, Lord, when you don't even have cup in your head. Will you pour the water on your body? And when you see, when you see these kind of believers come to God, you see, they will cry, oh God, oh mercy on me. And by the time they leave the church, very good actors, by the time they leave the church, you see them so much pride, arrogant, ignorant arrogance. That observeth the wind. Ah, you can. Oh my God, there's so much cold today. Uh, let me postpone the meeting. Praise God. Why God has programmed that day for you to sign that contract, for you to get that job. God just wanted you to go out. You think the weather will work for your good always? No. It is a nature. It has its own activity. It's doing. Don't bother yourself. 
COVID is jumping up and down, terrorizing people. Is your name, people? Don't follow the crowd. Don't do things because people are doing it. Be exceptional. I preached the message about being the exceptional person. Don't follow what the crowd is doing. Be that exceptional individual. Try to be an exceptional person. And you will get an exceptional result. There is no two ways about it. Whatsoever you sow, that you shall reap. Galatians 6, 7. Do not be deceived. God was speaking. So whatsoever a man soweth, he shall reap. So sow good seeds. Put your hand down and walk. There is always time for everything. There is a time to walk. And there is a time to rest. Don't take your walking time and give it to your rest time. No, sir. That is a wrong investment. Even if you are working a job that they pay you fourteen dollars, work that, do that job diligently. Do it faithfully. Love what you do. You want to be a champion? Love what you do. Hallelujah. Number eight. Number eight. you Holy Spirit one of the things you must hear from this corner is truth truth is the only antidote to cure ignorance number eight behave yourself wisely you may have a desire to be a champion but you, you lack attitude or your behavior is very porous. It can affect your goal to be a champion. First Samuel 18, 14 to 15. 1 Samuel chapter 18, verse number 14 to 15. It says, And David behaved himself wisely in all his ways, and the Lord was with him. He behaved himself wisely in all his ways and the Lord was with him. Verse number 15. Wherefore, when Saul saw that he behaved himself wisely, he was afraid of him. Let me tell you, when you act with wisdom, people will fear you. Poverty will avoid you. Saul only saw that David be only behaving himself alone. David is just behaving himself wisely the Bible says and Saul was afraid of him because a man is behaving wisely wisdom will take you to places I tell you the grace of God can carry you high but attitude and character will sustain you I repeat the grace of God can take you to the top but attitude and character we sustain you up there. Number nine and the last. Number nine and the last. Be followers of good things. Be followers of good things. Hebrews chapter six. Verse number 12. The follower of good things. That ye be not slothful, but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promise. That ye be not slothful. Let's see the Amplify. What the Amplify said there. What the Amplify said. Verse number 12. He said, so that you will not be spiritually sluggish. But will, will instead be imitators of those who through faith. I love this. Who through faith lean on God with absolute trust 
and confidence in him and in his power and by patience endurance even when suffering you see that even when suffering are now inheriting the promises even though they are suffering they learn to hold strong on God God say imitate those ones follow those ones people that teach you how to have faith not people that teach you how to fake it I heard somebody once say oh you have to fake it until you get it I said no thank you very much I rather fake it until I get it faith is the substance of things hoped for the evidence not seen so instead of faking it you have to fit it father by faith i receive those promises that you have given to me in the name of jesus in accordance to your word i take possession i step into my season of plenty in the name of jesus i refuse to experience poverty i refuse to be slothful in the name of jesus i refuse anything that is anti-redemption endurance is one of those be followers of good things I love good things and when I see people that have good things I learn from them I go and ask them I say please tell me uh, how did you get it done I'm not afraid to learn I have a revolutionary mindset I can move and progress very fast from one section to the other very fast why because i understand that it takes god and his grace and a man that is willing to get to the next level the children of israel many of them that were not willing they all died in the wilderness the bible says if you're willing and obedient you will eat the fruit of the land some are journeying but they are not willing some are in the church but they are not willing to be in the church some are in the church but they are not willing to listen to God some are just there to warm the bench let me be here at least they say I'm not here you are coming to church for who? or you are attending service for who? it's for yourself don't make it look like you are attending service to encourage the pastor I don't need that encouragement Hello, I'm encouraged by the grace of God. But it's for yourself. Build your most holy faith. You build yourself. Build yourself. Build yourself. Have confidence in God. When you have confidence with God, you can hit any height at all. As far as you can see. God was speaking to Abraham. He told Abraham after Lot had gone. He said, Abraham, lift up your eyes from where you stand. As far as you can see, I have given to you. He said to Jeremiah, what seest thou? Some of us want to be great, but we are, we are not seeing anything. And when somebody says, Pastor, please pray for me. And I ask you, I will always ask what are you seeing because if you can't see anything about yourself first whatever i say to you will not make sense to you it's not about coming and say oh pastor please prophesy to me prophecy without you seeing will not make sense refuse yourself to be spiritually blind you got to see something. If you see defeat in your life, if you, if you look at yourself in the mirror and you're seeing a defeated person, no matter how I prophesy to you, even though God like let him come down himself and say to you, you, you must be prosperous. You will not be prosperous. You know why? As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. I think greatness every morning I get up I don't see here I, in this place we are now no no I don't I'm not even seeing here now I'm seeing the promise there is something I'm seeing and what I am seeing is what is driving me every morning I get so tired the 
in my body but when it comes to the morning i'm always out there because there is something i see tomorrow i may not have it now but i'm seeing it tomorrow and it's coming what's driving you what is that drive inside of you is your drive things that are temporal is your drive just about buying a house is that the drive if that's just your drive to buy a house then there is trouble because definitely you're going to buy a house so after you buy a house that's it what next ah you need to change that mentality and i pray in the name of jesus that your drive will not just be to buy a house but your drive will be to be a champion that house will just be one of those things you walk into tim hortons and you order for a coffee that's how you buy a house am i communicating with somebody and by the grace of god i prophesy to you you may be thinking that you are gonna you are gonna you're gonna walk yourself and take loan and buy a house but i pray for you today by faith that god will give you and make you so great that you will buy your house cash out first time the early time i came into canada and the first pastor i spoke to about ministry just trying to get his understanding about it he, what if i followed what he told me by now i would have come back to wherever i'm coming from there was no hope all that i was told was filled with fear and intimidation everywhere I put my head oh brother I know you have some great you know desire but you know you can't make it it's not how it's done it's not how it's done that's what I can hear you can't stand on your own that's what they told me one of the words yeah they said look you can't stand by yourself in Canada you have to hide yourself under a bigger church I say wait 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 hold on is it based on what this society is saying or based on what God is saying? Will I base the vision of the ministry on what man is saying or what God is saying? Listen, let me tell you, you may look tiny and small, but there comes a time when you have to tell your situation how big your God is. I tell you, don't look down on yourself. Don't accept anyone to talk you down. You are God's divine project. And God is not going to abandon you. God never made you his project because you were so righteous. No, it's not based on your righteousness. It's based on the righteousness of Christ, Jesus. One of the things we believe here in the Dynamis Palace is that you cannot come in contact with this ministry without your life changing. You will just notice that there is a switch going on. A shift is happening. Gradually, you are being, you are being shifted to something great. Because in this ministry, we believe that no matter how punctured and ruptured your life is, it can be sutured by God. We don't just say it, we mean it, we believe it. With all tenacity inside of us, we know that our God is capable and over capable to do that. I am not selling you a product that is not real. <laughs> my God is my product. Am I communicating? Jesus is my identity. Am I talking to somebody? So I'm not selling you or telling you something that is not real. I'm telling you of something I know I have tested it. Ah, the Bible says, Come test and see, for the Lord is good. Come and see. Test my God. I don't care how you have been battered by life. I don't care how you, you failed many times. How many times you failed? I don't care. God is not interested in your past, God is interested in your tomorrow don't mind your money 
your money may have started rough oh yeah that money may have started so roughly but let me tell you God is not interested of how many times you have failed for the wise man falleth seven times and the Bible says seven times shall he rise again a defeated man is not the man that falls and rise a defeated man is the man that falls and decide to remain where he fell from don't accept it don't accept anything that does not conform to the word of God don't accept anything that doesn't agree with the scripture you ask me how I live my life I live my life based on the scripture if the scripture say I shall not die but live to declare the good works of the Lord first question is this what am I doing? Am I doing the good works of the Lord? Yes. So therefore, I am aligning myself with the scriptures. Not with what one doctor will say. Not with what one person is saying. I am aligning my destiny with the scripture. So therefore, for me to fail is based on if the word of God can be broken. So you got to come and put yourself in the place of reality of the world. Before I close, 1 Peter chapter 3, verse number 13. As I close. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse number 13. It says, now, reading from the Amplified, it says, now, who is there to hurt you? if you become enthusiastic for what is good <laughs> who is there that can hurt you when you become serious of that which is good good things are sweet but you cannot be serious about them you want to be a champion be serious about what you're doing today and i assure you count this day and add the next four to five years they will say you had a word that changed your life because you became serious with what you're doing zeal is what wakes you up in the morning even when you are so down zeal enthusiastic being enthusiastic about what you do crazy over what you believe in. Sometimes I tell people, I say, you are even struggling to believe in yourself. Yourself that you can see through the mirror. And if I add to it, I say, believe in God. You look at, I, I can't see God. So, I mean, believe in yourself. Believe in God. These are the two factors that determine your starting point. God, yourself. When you believe in God and you believe in yourself to achieve that, the grace of God comes and empower your actions. That's what co contributes and amount to being a champion. Rise up to your feet. Father, I thank you for making me a champion. Lift up your voice and begin to thank God for the word that you've heard. Thank the Lord for the word that you've heard. Father, I thank you. I am now a champion. I continue in my mood and grace of being a champion. Open your mouth and pray. Pray that prayer. Edobo shatabaradados. Ibarado soto bragadi, mekoto brahada bara, zesko flo shata balush, inerabo shata gabaha. Glory to your name, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord God Almighty. 
in the name of Jesus Lord I thank you for making me a champion flow flow like a mighty wind spirit of victory cover us with your wind thank you Holy Spirit I said blow 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 like a mighty wind spirit of victory cover us with your wings father lord i thank you for great men and great women in the name of jesus i pray for that that you do i pray for that connection that god has given to you today i prophesy over your the works of your hands may you prosper and be great in all you lay your hands to Father Lord, I pray for somebody today that is so battered. I pray for that person today that is so discouraged. In the name of Jesus, I pray for the spirit of courage to come on you right now. I pray for the grace of courage to overtake you. In the name of Jesus, thank you Holy Spirit. Thank you Lord. Thank you, Father. Say these words after me. Say, from today, I declare over my life that I'm a champion. I am not becoming, I am not becoming a champion, but I am a champion. I assume today my position as a champion. I overcome obstacles from today whatsoever that has been a hindrance in my life I overcome I leap over walls in the name of Jesus money will never be a problem to me I will not work for money but money will work for me I confess these words today by the power of the most high God and I overcome what has overcome me all these years and I overcome what has overcome my family what pulled my father down will never pull me down in the name of Jesus I cannot be a failure I am a successful man I'm a successful woman in the name of Jesus I stand upon a new platform is a platform of champions from today may my name be registered as a champion in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost if you believe that 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 is you jam those hands to the Lord and give him 